mighty name. And so this morning we will start our, our, our message and, and um, we'll be talking about this month, the series is Divine Gateway to Enduring Riches. Say with me, Divine Gateway to Enduring Riches. Divine Gateway to Enduring Riches. My goodness, that's the weakest. I, if, I took, if you're more than me and you're not saying it, I, my microphone is just one person, okay? We're going to say it together, I need you to be louder than the microphone. I want those online to hear you. Are we ready? One, two, go. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me ask you a question. If for one, if this is, I'm going to ask you a question, and, and I'm going to get a real answer from you guys here this morning. Let's assume you were asleep, um, and you had a dream, or you were in a moment where you had a dream, or a vision, or you were walking, you were driving home, and, and, and you just parked and, and saw a vision, or the angel of the Lord came to you and said to you, listen to this, listen to this. He says to you, blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply your descendants. As the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, your descendants shall possess the gate of the enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. My question to you, you had this great encounter. What would be the first thing you would do? not a trick question. I really am asking a question. And what would you do? What would be the first thing you would do? You rejoice. Good. Give thanks. Well, after giving thanks, what's the thing you're going to do? I'm sorry? You write it down. Awesome. What else? Accept it. Accept it. That's great. I'm praying over it. Well, that's great. That's interesting. But you know one thing, right? And, and no, that's great. These are very good answers. Um, this was exactly the promise God gave to Abraham. So God appeared to Abraham and told him this same thing. And like, you know, Abraham not only made sure that came to pass, but it made sure it was exceedingly enduring to all generations. You see, we are children of Abraham today. Why? Because Abraham heard this, but it made it happen. So how many times have we heard things that God has said to us and it stops with us rather than endure time? You see, Abraham was one that saw this and we're going to revisit this in just a moment. What were some, and I'm just going to give you a quick highlight of some things Abraham did that made this something enduring. God spoke words to him, spoke prophetic words to him. You hear me say things and I declare prophetic words and God said some things to Abraham. But what made Abraham become, make it a lasting legacy? Such a way that a nation was built. The nation of Israel, a well-respected nation was built because of an obedience. Because of somebody who heard words that didn't mean anything or that just meant words to him at that time. The Bible says God called Abraham Genesis chapter 12 from his father's uh, uh, land. And he said to him, he said, listen, I would he said, leave your father's house to a place I'm going to show you. He says, I'm going to, I will bless you. You'll be a blessing of the nations. And he gave him blessings, Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 to 7. And when he gave him the blessing, or 1 to 2, uh, 7 blessings. When he gave him the blessings, Abraham continued. But here's the interesting thing. 25 years, he had, for, he had to wait for the first seed to carry on that legacy. 25 years. Now, it's important. I said, what would you do? And I, my first question would be, what if this doesn't come up for 25 years? How many people remember this? How many people will follow through? How many people will realize that the word is potent and it doesn't matter how long it takes? The word is real. If the word has come to you, it is real. It's potent and it doesn't matter how long it takes. But here's the thing. The Bible says that we should... In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, it says we should, through patience, we should, we should follow those who through. Uh, come on, what we here this morning. We should follow those who through. Inherited, who faith and patience inherited the promise. Remember David, Abraham. Abraham, he just stood out and the Bible says Abraham believed God and was accounted to him for what? Righteousness. 
He is the father of faith. So Abraham was able to make the promises of God enduring to last generations to the fact that Jesus came from that lineage. What was what is the impact of the last word God gave you? What are we doing? Because God is speaking to us every day. And if we're going to have our words, the words of God in our lives and, and His promises enduring, there are certain things we need to know. Now, if we know that Abraham made it happen, I want to just give you a quick highlights of um, what was some of Abraham's first response when he heard the same thing. When he heard, blessing, I'll bless you, and multiply, I'll multiply you, the descents of your hearts and of your, uh, the, your descendants as the, shall be like the stars in heaven. The first thing Abraham did is to give you some highlights of some things he did. You see, Abraham became, was a, 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 um, became a, um, an, uh, an, uh, an unapologetic, obedient person. You see, God approached to Abraham in the book of, I think it was Genesis chapter 17. And he said to him, said, listen, Abraham, if you would be okay and be blemished, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to renew the covenant with him. And Abraham said, and God said to Abraham, here's what I need you to do. I want you to circumcise your kids and yourself and your family. Now, this Abraham was at least 90 years old. Now, what is a 90-year-old circumcising himself for? Everyone is family. His son was 14 years old. So 75 plus 14, um, 7, 7 or something, 6 plus 14, right? Um, almost 90 years old. So here's the thing. David was 90 years old, and God said he should circumcise himself. You see, the moment God got up from Abraham, Abraham called his family, and that same day, Abraham circumcised himself. So here's the thing. Abraham was very eager to be obedient to what instructions followed the promise. Another thing Abraham did was, Abraham was kin he, on preservation. You see, when Abraham, when God told him that your, your lineage is going to be that way, it's going to, it's, it's going to, I'm going to bless you and the seed shall be a blessing. You know what Abraham did? Abraham did not allow his son to that covenant to be contaminated by the children and the women of Canaan. Who you associate with matters to your ability to have enduring riches. Abraham could have uh, told Isaac to marry a woman in Canaan, but he sent Eliezer to go to his father's house and said, go find Isaac a wife for my father's house. Same thing with Jacob. Jacob went there. Remember Jacob and Laban? He went there as well and got Rachel and Leah. You see, there is a preservation. The Bible says evil communication corrupts good manners. The Bible says that, that do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. There is something that has to happen. Your friends can either make you endure your riches or your personal or, your, or God's blessings last longer or cut short in your life. Who we associate with matters. Who we associate with matters. And here's another thing Abraham did. Abraham loved and feared God. You see, when God told him all these things, Abraham was eager to see, what do you want me to do? Genesis 22, God appeared to Abraham and says, I want you to go in and, get, and, 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 and sacrifice your son. So Abraham went there and he, he did follow everything God said. God called him one time to go sacrifice. He said, Abraham, yes, go sacrifice your son, your only son. And so Abraham went ahead and, and took the, the same thing. You see, and, and he went to the place and he was ready to sacrifice until God said he should not do that. Said, now, and here's an interesting thing, I think verse 17 of the scripture says, Now I know you fear me. Now I know you fear God. You see, Abraham put the God of the gift above the gift given by the God. By God. You see, he put the love for God more than the gift he received. Many of us will trust for God for a job or something or a child or something, and then that is the end of your trusting. Until the next predicament comes in. You're trusting God for some miracle and you get that miracle. You see, it wasn't hard for God to do it in the first place. Could you have imagined that God was watching your heart in that place while you're still waiting? Because he eventually did it. But was it, could it have been that God was watching your heart? Because God said at the beginning, God said, I want to test Abraham. So in other words, God was looking at Abraham's heart. But he could have done it. And if you read in Hebrews, Abraham, I think we were chapter 11, Abraham said, I know that God, because here's the thing, Abraham knew the character of God. When he was fighting for, for, for Sodom, he says, can the righteous God, can the God of the earth, I said, well, not, he knows that the God of earth would do right. 
So he knows the character of God. You see, the interesting thing is that we, we don't get the things of God because we have not gotten to know God himself. And when you don't know God yourself, you cannot love someone you don't know. You cannot fear, reverence somebody you don't know. If you're going to be having enduring riches this year, this month, you've got to know the giver before the gift. Because sometimes the delay of your gift, of the gift, is because the giver is watching your heart. It says, well, well this gift hurt them more than bless them. Is there nothing Abraham did? Abraham, Abraham was able to have endure riches because he was able to command his family. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 19, as, listen to this, listen to this, everyone. This blew my mind away when God was revealing to me. He said to me, Abraham did not ask, he did not recommend. The Bible says, Genesis chapter 18, verse 19, it says, I know, please, we'll wait for them. It says, for I have known him, talk about Abraham, in order that he may command. You see, he was not asking his children. We are in a nation that we cannot pass on etiquette, glow, um, 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 the love of God to our children because we're like in the world these days of let them do what they want to do. They have freedom of expression. They feel like a goat today, then let's call them a goat. They feel like a, a, a woman today, let us call him a woman. They feel what well, they let them get into their feelings and put the word of God aside. But God said the reason Abraham was able to get the endure riches because it says, I have known Abraham that he would command his children and his households after him that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to who? Abraham, what he has spoken. Your righteousness and that of the people that are going to inherit your riches is necessary for bringing it to pass. Many people truncate the opportunity and the blessing. God says, I'm going to bless you. Yes, that's true. But we couldn't truncate that if we cannot teach our children about the God who supplies it. And it's important. So, we, you know, I, I wonder when, when we have these programs in church and we say bring your children, and people are like, I don't really have time. I don't want to do this. But if we have to go to sports, we can take them to sports. Listen, sports will help them be confident. But the presence of God will help them reach not just eternity, but be relevant on earth. There's no better place than to teach and to, to, to command and let the children be filled with God. When the children feel the Holy Spirit and they go to the places out there, then the world will be changed for God. Because the only way the transference of riches could be enduring was because Abraham prioritized God, not only for himself, but he commanded. No, commanded. And that script translation says he directed. It is not an opinion. Do you spend time directing your children? Or do the children, when we don't feel like going to church, let's not go to church today because we don't feel like going to church. Because here's the thing, listen to this, every generation will double the impact of what the generation is doing. So if you do not go to church, your children will not even have, yours is because my, my tooth aches. So we're all not going to church. The next time your children will be, because I woke up late, we're not going to church. The next generation, children will be like, just because I'm in my feelings today. We're not going to church. Because the excuses get shallower and shallower. Look at the children of Israel. At some point, Abraham, we knew that Isaac, Jacob, at some point it became, you almost, they were calling the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, but they didn't know the God of their fathers. And they fell off that place. And God had to almost eradicate them, but he remembered what he said to Abraham. So he had to keep it going because of enduring riches. What has God said to you that is truncated? There is another thing that Abraham did. Abraham, you see, about Abraham's teaching, here's the interesting thing. Did you know that Isaac always went into the, into the meadow to meditate? Isaac knew, you see, Isaac knew what it was and, and, and what it was to, to serve God. When even when he was the scapegoat, he was a sacrifice to be gone. Isaac went and asked his father, he says, Dad, where is the, well, I understand this thing, but where is the goat, the ram, we're going to sacrifice? 
And Abraham said, the Lord will provide the, the ram for his own sacrifice. Now, here's the interesting thing. Two things stand out to me. Number one is, Isaac was already accustomed to how Abraham sacrificed. Isaac just knew what was going to happen. Second thing stood out to me is the fact that I, not only Isaac was Isaac, as accustomed to it, Isaac was eager to participate. No ram, but we're going to serve God. Eh. It's like, it's like, we don't know where the money's coming from, but we're going to, serve, we're going to go to church anyway. Eh, no problem. He didn't say that. Don't go. There's no ram. I mean, it just didn't make sense to me. Children of nowadays will tell you, it doesn't make sense to me. You don't have, you don't have that. The, the question, your ability to move with faith. But he didn't. He just followed, even though he was inside. My question is, what was he thinking when they bound him like this? When they bound him like that? He trusted his father and the God of his father. You see, when you trust, when your children know that, anything you pass on would always pass itself on. It won't be truncated. Are you with me, somebody? We cannot allow the world to dictate what we do if we want to have enduring riches. So Abraham lived and loved to sacrifice. You see, it's an interesting thing. After Abraham did that, and God says no. Abraham looked up, saw a ram in front of him. And because he saw a ram in front of him, Abraham could have said, Woo, God, thank you. Now that God has spared you. He didn't say, God never said, sacrifice that ram. He said, God has spared you. He, he could have said, you know what? Now we go feast and enjoy. God has supplied us meat to go and kill so that we can enjoy the fact that he didn't take Isaac. Let's go rejoice. Like, you know, everyone, something happens to you. Let's go party next thing. Let's go party. Ah, I got the job. Let's go party. Ah, I, they didn't lay me off. Let's go party. But instead, Abraham said, you see that ram? I am going to sacrifice it for the God who spared my son's life. He wasn't told to do that. And yes, another thing about it is when he sacrificed that ram, that brought another blessing. God looked at him and brought another blessing. So these were five quick, six quick things that Abraham did that made it happen. Today, we enjoy the blessings of Abraham. The Bible says that through Jesus, that blessing of Abraham is now our portion. Galatians chapter 3 is now our portion, which has lasted generations and endured years. There, is, there was something that was evident in creation. There was something that was evident in creation. God wanted us to have the best of, his, of himself and the best of this world. So the ability for us to produce that was already put in our hearts, was already put when we were created. God is interested in giving you and me riches. He's interested in giving us what we desire. You know, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, it says that if you were evil, and don't try to play, claim good. That's why I said nobody should say they're good. It says, you who are evil, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, there is no parent here that is not excited about doing something good for their children. If you're here, then there's a different kind of ministry we need to be working with you on. Meet with me after the service. Okay? There's no parent that does not want to give the best to the children. But the Bible says, if you were evil, know how to, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven, who is in heaven, give good what? Things to those who ask. God's passion and desire is to be able to give us good things. I say it, and I'll say it again every year, every week. I look at it, God refines it for me. The operating system. You see, here's interesting. The operating system in us is, the, is blessed. The Bible says, Genesis, I think Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says, and, and when he created man in me, and the Bible says, and God blessed them. Now watch this. God, he could have, if the word blessing was just enough that was there, that was the end of it. He said, and God blessed them. God blessed them. Then the Bible says, and then he said, you see, in a computer system, the CPU is the computer you see. The, 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 the CPU, the, the, the laptop, whatever, that processing, that's, that's, the, that's the, the, the casing that you see, right? All those that you look at the whole computer together and see, that is the computer. That's what you call the computer. Some people say CPU, that's what you call computer. But the reality is there's no software in a computer will work without the operating system. 
Sometimes it's Mac. Sometimes it's Windows. But there must be an operating system. You see, every computer would only work when it's powered by the source. The Bible says, the breath of Almighty has given me, uh, the Lord has made me, um, and, and the breath of Almighty has given me life. The Spirit of the Lord has made me, and the breath of Almighty God has given me life. When we get connected to God, when He breathed into us, He breathed life into us. But He now, the first operating system He downloaded was a platform where everything else can ride on. And that operating system was what He said. The Bible says when He finished, the first thing He did was He blessed them. You see, that was a download of an operating system. Because on everything else, land's ability is because you're blessed that you're alive. It's because you're blessed that you can smile. It's because you're blessed. So don't wait for that thing to determine that is it me I'm blessed. I didn't have a great day today. Does that mean I'm blessed? No. You are first blessed. Then you're able to, to accomplish anything. The Bible says that he blessed them. Then he said, and he said, bless them, saying, be fruitful and multiply. The blessing is the first thing that God gives so that we can have ability to uh, implement the remaining software. Are you with me? Be fruitful and multiply. And so what God did was, is this. God also blessed Abraham. When he blessed Abraham, he now told him some things that would happen. It's in that knowledge that Abraham began to work in line and according to what God has said. God's intention is that you and I will be blessed. God's intention is that you and I will have more than we need. God's intention is that God, it says, it says it's, it's, it's because he's a rich God, is eager to give riches to his children. Enduring riches are not given to provide temporary pleasure, bragging rights, but enduring riches are given to have a lasting legacy. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 14, it says, Whatever the Lord does is forever. The blessing you have that God has put upon your life is so that it can go past you. There are many, you call them, they call them tycoons, or they call them, um, you know, the, I don't know what they call them, the, what, the Vanderbilts and the, the Rockefellers and the Kennedys. We look at all of them. D dynasty. The reality of it is that there's only so much a dynasty can last. Sometimes the Bible, the Bible is clear about it, but sometimes you see that the, you raise the money and have the children, but the children squander the money. After about three generations, they don't know how you got the money because they let it go. After about three or four, nothing, there's no dynasty that's, lost, that's lasted four generations. But Abraham's dynasty lasted multiple generations and thousands of years. What was the secret? And we went through some of the things Abraham said, Abraham did. Because it's possible to have money, but not have riches. It's possible to have money, but not have riches. Have you seen people with money and they're crying at night? Because they are not fulfilled. Because they have riches and they, a friend of mine, after working about so many years, 45 years of his life, he decided to retire. And when he was retiring, he retired with sorrow in his heart. And I said, why? He said, listen, I've been battling. My son has been in drugs, in and out of rehab for the last 10 years. He says, I'm retiring and at some point I'm about to give up. I could either take my retirement money, all I've saved. And go one last time to help him out of this, that, this situation. Or I could just ignore him and say, I've done my best. Because of his son, he waited much longer to retire. And this guy is a wealthy guy. He's got very wealthy guy. It's possible to have riches, but not be enduring. It's possible to have riches, but not be happy. So riches is not what makes you happy. That's why we don't pursue riches. We pursue enduring riches. Why? Because enduring riches goes beyond the tangibility of what you have. It goes to the fact that how can you keep what you have without losing yourself? Somebody say amen. God's design for, uh, uh, for outside the riches means that it's got to outlive you. It's got to speak for you after you're gone. Let me tell you two things. Many of us who live to, 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 many of us live to live a history or some of us live to live a legacy. Which one are you going to choose? 
History will tell people look at you, your children will look at you from history and see what they should not do. This is what happened, this is my history. History tells how they got there. Legacy inspires for where they're going next. History tells this, there's a story about you. Legacy is a, is a, is a precedence, is a precedence on what needs to be carried on. If you do not think beyond just accumulation, you end up become history. But if you think beyond accumulation, beyond where you think you can get, beyond what you think you can get in this earth, you will see a legacy. If you point to your children that money is not everything, that God is everything, then you're leaving a legacy. If you tell children money is everything, then even at the moment when you realize, when you realize and get older, money, like it's Solomon, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity, because you will realize it one day. You will realize it one day. And the sooner you realize it, the better for you because you can then begin to change your ways. Or we can begin to change our ways. But if you one day will realize it, and you now want to tell your children, you know, I've been there, I've done that. Money's not everything. They'll look at you and say, why didn't you do it when you were there? Why didn't you make that decision when you were there? You're not telling money's not everything. Uh-uh. We're not. Uh-uh. You got one car, I'm getting four. Not because I need it, just because I want to show you that the glory of a latter shall surpass the former. Like Ken Hagen would say, that they will even quote the scripture to make you feel like, oh, maybe there's the truth in that. But here's the interesting thing. Legacy means that they cannot move forward without seeing what has been built to that moment. Legacy is what gives a pointer. There's some people that realize that, you know what? I have seen what my mom and my dad started. I'm going to take it on to the next place. History is, I've seen what my dad got here. It's good to know their story. Now I've got to live my own way. Are you living a legacy? Or are you writing history? It's because enduring means something handed forward, advanced, something valuable, something that keeps going on. And it's beyond you and I. Because just because we're blessed does not mean the blessing hangs with us. We're blessed. It's only reason for blessing is so that we ourselves can be a blessing. That's why a receiver, a, that, a man that only receives can never be a blessed man. You see, the definition of blessed is not because I received. The definition of blessed is I have enough and I can give more. That is blessed. Blessed is not that I get more. Because when you get, when you bless, when you, you're, all you do is you're getting more, you call that person a, um, you take more, take more, take more, take more, never give. A reservoir, a parasite, a glut, a man, you have the names for them. Have you seen somebody that says, every time he gives, he gives something out, he gives somebody else. What would you call that person? That's what I thought too. Because there are not too many of them. We have names for the ones there. But those people are people who are really blessed. Because the reason why God's given us this blessing is so that it can be a blessing. If we don't teach our children what it means to sacrifice to give other people, they think that you're, you're keeping the money for them. So my children came to me and said, um, so you've got, uh, um, what's that thing to school? For school. You've got um, scholarship, no scholarship, what's that thing? College fund for me. I said, oh, uh, I said, there are many scholarships. Go and apply. They came back to me and they said, so we need to know, um, are you a mommy millionaires? I said, it doesn't matter what we are. Whatever we earn is our own. If you want to earn your own, go and start working at it now and we'll earn your own. You see, otherwise you realize if you don't teach your children that it's beyond just what I'm accumulating, you find your children just waiting, waiting, waiting till you go and then you just dip right inside the place. And how many generations have wealth that have been truncated because they didn't teach their children, they didn't command their children to on how to move forward with these things. Somebody say, man, may you not labor for other people to, to squander in Jesus' name. And our riches is not what we can pursue. Instead, it's a result of who we pursue. You see, the ground that makes any leaves, any leaf or anything fertile and produce fruit 
It's only the fruit can only get produced as long as the root and the fertile ground continues to remain fertile. If you pursue just the trees and the fruit itself, there's going to be a time when that tree and the fruit will stop. Whether in season or different season. But when you keep feeding the soil, when you keep building up on that, that tree would always produce a fruit. It's one thing God gave me as a revelation. He said to me, he said, any fruit can be doctored, sprayed. I didn't remember, I didn't realize this, that apples are actually put in wax to preserve the color so it can, be look, it can look good. Wax, if you go scrape it out, you see that there's wax on the apples so it can preserve the colors so it can look good. But you see, when you have a tree, a healthy, good, beautiful, well-fertilized apple tree, you don't need the wax. Why? So if you can build the foundation of what makes, what produces the fruit, you realize that the fruit will last long. If you can build, build the foundation of, of what gives riches, you realize the riches will, find, will continue to go. Abraham never forgot the gift, the father, who gave him this gift, who gave him the, the riches. That's why it could last long. But when Israel came in, after they went inside people of Israel, God was telling them, you must remember me. You must remember me. You must remember me. Israel was spared because of the covenant with their father, not because of their own obedience. Because of the covenant. It just tells me that when you are able to make God, who you pursue, your foundation, then what he has becomes yours. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek God first and everything about him. Then anything else will be added unto you. Don't seek things. The Bible says many seek things and they store things and they put those things in their houses and say in the, in the 401k and everything. I was sharing with you last week, one person lost $80 billion in one day. One day. It says don't stuff yourself things here on earth where, where moths and riches and, and, and thieves will come and steal. So but get yourself a place where nothing, put your treasures in a place where those things cannot take it from you. May I hear you say amen. In Matthew, that's Matthew chapter 6 verse 29. It says for where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. When you show them, when you show what it means to be a blessing, you find yourself building on a legacy. Now, I, I, quickly, what are, just before I go there, I'm going to talk about this, that enduring riches is not what I get to deliberately pursue. It's not a destination I arrive at. Instead, it's a product, byproduct, of who I have chosen to pursue. Now, real quick, what are enduring riches? Number one, Enduring riches are God's blessings that are sorrow-free and backed by God's comprehensive insurance. What do I mean by that? It is something that's rooted in God. You cannot have enduring riches if you do not know God. Like I said to you, many people making money, honestly, there are people that have won many lotteries. But you cannot, you that you've not won one, you're still richer than people that won many lotteries. Accumulation is not riches. Accumulation of just getting something and then just, just, just running to something and getting that thing is not what it means. Because first beyond what has got, what has got endured, has got to be endured, has got to be understood. Why were we given? Because if you use the, you know, I think it was Miles Monroe said something. I said that when the, when the purpose of a thing is missing, abuse is inevitable. When you don't understand why God is giving you the riches, you will always look at, use it for your own things you want to do. Now, let me be clear. God wants to be blessed. God wants to give you riches. God wants to make you outstanding in what you're doing. God wants to make you outstanding in your place of work. He wants to make you full of himself, full of what he's able to give, you, give to you. So let me be clear. God wants you to be blessed and to be full of riches and to have more than you can. Don't, that's not what I'm saying. But here's the thing. Every time God gives a blessing, there is a purpose behind it. Never just take the blessing and ignore the instruction. Never just take the blessing and, involve the, and, and ignore the purpose. There is a purpose. So why you say, Lord, you know, the same thing. Lord, you've given me this money. Lord, you've given me this business. Lord, you've given me this career. Lord, you've, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to influence the world with it? What do you want this impact to make in my children's life? There are many people who chase money so much that they've left the family at home. I hope the children are getting wayward. What is the value of that blessing? 
when your children, when you come back home and you cannot live, you can, you're not happy because of the state you see your children. So the story about being in dirt riches, another thing about this is many people pursue so much riches. Like instead of taking what you have and building on what you have, what happens to many of us is this. We wait for, we look at other people to say, that guy is richer than me, so let me do what he's doing. See, that's the story about the parable of talent. You see, God gave, the master gave five, then he gave what? Two, then he gave one. Five realized that this is my riches and began to run away with, run with it and made more. Two said, this is my, I've got to go. One said, I don't even have enough to start with. You see, it's not about what you're starting with here. Because all of us will handle riches. It may not be equal. We'll handle riches. The question is, can your riches be enduring? The one with one handled one. The Bible said, Jesus said, the, the, Jesus said, the master came back and said, even if you had given to the bank, I would have gotten some interest back. In other words, that little thing I gave you could be enduring. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to start with so much more. Start with where you are. Start with what you have. People chase so many things to say, if I can just get that 50,000, I can do that one. You have 5,000, what can you do with them? If you're not a blessed man, if you don't think like a blessed man when you have 2,000, it'll be tough to think like a blessed man when you have 20,000. If you don't pay your tithe when you have $200, you will be difficult to pay your tithe when you have $2 million. Let me tell you the truth. I was telling someone one day, I said, you know, so let's assume I play lottery and I get a million, let's say, $400 million, and they came back. And, and do you know what a tithe is on $400 million? Do you know what a tithe is on 400 So let's say they cut it off and they take the taxes and everything. That's at least $160 million. Do you know what a tithe is on $160 million? That is $60 million if you pay net. That is $40 million if you pay gross. Even if you don't know the name of the devil, he will appear to you. Even if you have never signed up with him before, he will appear to you. Ah, uh -uh. what is wrong with you? Are you that? Before, you see, this is easy because we're talking about this really. It's easy to move away from place of blessing to the place of just me. But if you understand that, ah, uh -uh, yesterday I had zero. Today I have 400 million. And the devil's not telling you, ah, uh, are you insane? Who even told you it was God that he would have to get that million? I mean, he will, he will quote the scripture for you. You will be, you, you, <laughs> you will recognize his voice quickly. And that moment, interesting things, the voice of God begins to just be the same way it's always been. Subtle, smooth, talking to you. My son, my son, my daughter. But the voices will be louder on the other side. Why? Because anyone who's faithful in a little, then much more will be given to them. Go with me to the book of Luke chapter 12, I think verse 14. I think Luke chapter 12, verse 14. <clears throat> uh, 15, let me see where I'm going there. Luke chapter 12. Yes, let's go 15 and then we'll go 16. It says, then, and it says, then he said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life doesn't consist on the abundance of things he accumulates or possesses. Verse 16, it said, then talk about a, a, a rich fool. Is that the way I'm going? Um, Yeah, they could, that, that can speak the word I'm saying. It's, so he, you know the story of a rich fool. It says, after he got this wonders lottery, he had a very great thing. He said, now I will go sell my barn. I will go sell my business. I will go put my barns and put everything inside my barn so that I can sit down, eat, and be merry. And verse 21 of that scripture, or I think, is it 21 of that scripture? <laughs> it says that, you know, verse 20 says, but God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Those whose then whose will those things be which you have provided? He said, my hand has made this thing. He said, but today, your soul will be required of you. Now, who's going to spend the thing you've accumulated? You see, when we're, rich, when we're rich about just possessing what we have and not about listening or having God in the center, when these things come around, it's easy for our mind to think we've arrived. We've built, let's build this place. Ah, I built church, church. Don't worry, we'll send the money to church. We don't have to show up there. You're blessed when you realize 
that its money is just nothing but a tool. It's just, an, uh, it's just nothing but a tool. Because you can get all the things in the world. You know, maybe it's something you were doing before you had money, now you had money, you don't have time for, to do that. The way you know, that's people say it's easy for people to say, I'm not moved by money or I, I, I'm not moved by that one. It's, you don't know that by words. Just like you don't know patience because you just realized that the bank did not transfer your money on time and you didn't have anybody to yell at. So you thought, I'm a patient, I'll wait till tomorrow. But if your wife or your husband did that same thing, it would be a different story. So you don't know patience because the bank didn't transfer. The same way you would not know this. You would know the fact that you would know some of these other things. because You would know the, the, what's what I was saying. You would not know the area of the blessing with what you have received. In other words, when you now get the blessing, you never know what, how you can be tempted or you cannot be tempted. When you get that blessing, you find, and you find yourself that I was a children teacher when I was not having money. Now I have money. I must be a children teacher. I was just, my wife was saying about, uh, who's the, the president? president? President Carter was a Sunday school teacher. When he left his presidency, he went back into being Sunday school teacher. When he battled cancer, after he came out, he went back to being Sunday school teacher. You have not become a president. That I know of. Okay? Why then is it that positions and, and wealth take us away from what is our ultimate duty as believers? We have not, we've not become everything that... that, that other people are searching for. Maybe we even halfway. But the interesting thing is this. If we do not keep doing the same thing we did before we became wealthy. You see, Abraham, he sacrificed. When Abraham had little uh, uh, cattle, he sacrificed. When Abraham, when there was farming, he sacrificed. Do you know Abimelech wanted to take his wife, Sarah? That's a different story because who tries to go after a 90-year-old woman? But let's, let's even forget that one. He go, goes there. But Abimelech even paid Abraham, a Sarah, some money, saying that, you know what, just because I, I, I don't want people to, 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 to I, I want to help you save face, he paid the money. When he went to Egypt the first time, before, when they first took Sarah, the king of Egypt, they, you know what happened again? He, he, after that time, they gave uh, wealth and, and cattle to them. Abraham was just accumulating more and more and more, but he did not forget his God. You know, when he was, when Jacob was looking for was serving Laban. He also had a moment where he said, I need to go so that I can go serve my God. I need to go so I can go serve my God. Oftentimes we find ourselves in a place where we are, we are we're pursuing riches, but we forget who owns that riches. We forget how we got that riches. We forget how we can make it last longer. The interesting thing is this, everything you've got, there's nothing you have that was not given by God. And if it's going to be enduring, you must make sure that God is not leaving that place. He's always attached to anything you've got. If it's going to be enduring. Now, we're talking about riches. It could be your career. Before you got the job, you knew how you trusted God. Now you got the job, and then challenges are coming along the way. You want to use your mind to solve it. Galatians chapter 3 says, If you started in the Spirit, why then do you think now is the time to use your logical knowledge to try to solve that problem? You may have started, you may have, have trusted God for, for, for a career, a business, or something else in your life, or your marriage, or the healing of your marriage. And before you, before you got married, you prayed. After you got married, you don't pray anymore. Challenges begin to happen, and you're wondering why. If you want anything to be enduring, you must go back to the orchestrator, the source, and the designer of that thing. And that's the only way it's going to be enduring. May I hear you say, Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, it says, The blessing of the Lord is one that makes rich, and it doesn't add sorrow to it. Now, if you go about doing things the wrong way, you miss out on the opportunity to enjoy the blessings of God. Let me give you another one. Enduring riches is not determined by your immediate material possessions, but the impact you get to make on future generations. This means what you have in your hand is the seed for enduring riches. We have to uncover and develop the capacity to build from where we are. Everyone will see riches in their lifetime. But wisdom gets to determine how long it will last. I give you a story about the parable of talents. Everyone's going to touch one. Don't start comparing with the seed. Compare. Don't even, there's no reason to compare. Don't start comparing with the seed. But rather look forward to harvest from your own seed. Some people can have five things, and they may not be even harvest from one. You can have one, and, you can ha and then it can, be, it can be 
um, harvested, we can have plenty of harvest. There are many people that go to a place and people say, you just have only one. If this one does not work, then forget it. And God steps into that one. And he makes that one the, most, the best one you could ever have. There are some people that look for, uh, maybe you're going for an interview, and you've got, you got 17 offers, uh, 17 interviews, but then there's not one job. But then you go for just one, and just one changes your life forever. And you realize that even when they give in those 17 was so small, but just one changes that. You don't look at the seed to determine your, your, your riches. You look at the God who is behind the seed, because that's what makes the seed tangible and makes the seed enduring. May I hear you say amen? The Bible says that a good man leaves inheritance for his children's children. So it's not what you accumulate. It says, but the wealth of a sinner is stored up for the righteous. It's not what you accumulate. It's what you can disseminate when, when the time comes. Somebody say amen. Now, number three says, allowing richness towards God. Now, enduring riches is when you allow your richness towards God to dictate your purpose for riches in this world. We talked about the fact that, you know, um, in verse 21 of Luke chapter 12, that, that young man said, he said, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. When you let the riches of this world be consume you more than your riches or your richness towards God, you have not or you will not have enduring um, riches. And that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. I'll give you one more. Enduring riches are not, by, are not products of achievements, but they're only entrusted to people who operate in divine wisdom. You see, with divine wisdom, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 18, it says enduring riches are in... It says, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17, it says, I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me. Enduring riches and righteousness. You see, enduring riches transcends um, beyond just wealth alone. They go beyond wealth. Enduring riches is not because you are, have money. There are many who are rich in ideas and money comes towards them. Because many have money and they don't have ideas. Many have ideas, and money comes and follows them. Because a man of ideas would always, I mean, look at the richest man in the world. He had an idea. Everyone that became rich had an idea. Ideas, people say ideas rule the world. The reality of it about ideas is this. You don't need money to have ideas. So when you pursue riches and forget the wisdom needed, you're almost always pursuing the wrong thing. Enduring riches is when you put the wisdom of God and the wisdom first because you'll be able to recognize pockets and places God has designed you to go get the riches from. Because if you just pursue riches, you find yourself compromising and doing things that you should not do. But like we heard in testimony, she decided I'm not going to compromise there. The God who is able to do will take it farther. I don't want anything to taint my testimony. See, if you stand for God that way, then he will show up big. Abraham tried by Ishmael, but he realized that that was not it. God said, that's not it. My promise was to stand. Abraham did not try it again. Okay? He has done it. We've learned from it. Don't be one that God says, I'm going to give something and go try your own way. Don't try it. it, didn't, it, it Ishmael became a, a, a place where Israel was fighting for a long time. Ishmael got some blessings, but was not the blessing. But when the seed came, Ishmael, uh, uh, Isaac got the blessing. Do not give your, the blessing of your Isaac to an Ishmael. So ask God for the wisdom so you can recognize the pockets and places in your life. May you rise up on your feet, please. Oh. Father, we thank you. I want you to just close your eyes. Now, many people are here, and you know God. You know God very, very well. But I want to give an sp uh, opportunity to some special people, some people who won't know that God has promised them this. They know about God, but you don't have a relationship with him. See, in Dear Riches, like I said, Abraham knew God. 
It wasn't a, you didn't live in, the interesting thing, Eliezer was, go to, was told to go find a daughter, a wife for Isaac. Eliezer, Eliezer got there and he kept praying, the Lord, the God of my father Abraham would guide me, right? Would help me, right? He was praying. Even the people in his household, in order for them to be part of a covenant, had to be circumcised. They had to know God. Now, this is the thing. Maybe you've known God for a while, but other things have taken priority. Comparing with others, pursuing other things, it's taking you away from knowing and fearing God. Well, let me give you an opportunity to do this this morning. I want to just ask you, if you're here and you want to get to know God, you want to fall in love with Him all over again, you want Him to be the center of your life so that you can live legacy, not history, then I want you to raise your right hand. I will be willing to pray with you today. Anybody in here? Or maybe you may be online. Anybody in here? Hallelujah. You want to get to know God. I want to invite you home. Or you've been knowing God and you stepped away from the presence. Anybody? Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. And I give you the glory. Lift up your hands and say, Father, I thank you. I worship you. Say, Father, Lord God, I receive your wisdom to make the right decision. And you receive, receive wisdom towards riches so that I will know what to do when you start to bless me. I want us to pray the Father, Lord God, give me the courage. I will not be moved by this world. I will teach my children to, uh, to command my children to follow you because that is the recipe for enduring riches. And so shall it be in Jesus' name.